say four times a charm. It is time <laughs> for us to, for our uh, guest this week. He goes by the name of Dino Archie. He's a comedian. He's a podcast host. He does so much more. Um, we got, we're going to be talking to him about his new comedy special called Toxic, but Safe. Um, it was funny as hell. So uh, I'm glad to have him on the show. Um, if you haven't checked him out, <laughs> you got to check him out at Dino the Beloved on uh, on his IG page. What up, D what up what? Dino? Yeah, this is well, this is a, a bad start. No, this is a great start. This is a bad start. You try to do it four times? Are what are people were people watching in the event? Oh, I I just delete it. <laughs> I don't. Is anyone? Okay. Is anyone, is anyone watching? Because is it is anyone watching, or is it just me and you? Because we could just call each other, then oh, catch no. up. Okay. Um, this, the numbers are going up. Is it four or okay. five? Going up okay, now. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I just want to make sure because we could chop it up. You know, one on one. You know, not. Enough. Here we go. Not okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Yes, for those of you who have just joining us, I am live with the one, the only, Dino Archie. He's a comedian, podcast host. I'm sure he does so much more that he's going to fill us in with right now. Yo, Dino, thank you for coming back to the show. I think this is your third time on the yeah. show. Yeah, man, thank you for having me, man. You know, it was uh, organic. You know, I enjoy uh, chopping it up with you, man. So, yeah, easy play. play. Easy yeah. money. <laughs> I'm all about that. Yeah, I'm all about like who I enjoy talking with. You know, that's who. You know, it's your time, man. It's your time, and we all gonna die. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> every every day is a step closer to that. So uh, uh, I just try to, yeah, I try to spend my time wisely. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, so listen, I got a chance to 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 you know see you live last night and bro you're funny as hell and and the beautiful thing of it was is i know we had a conversation beforehand and then all of a sudden it, you were talking about the same thing in your in your comedy at that and i was like damn that's like he like a he like a comedian rapper he just freestyled this whole comedy show this is what <laughs> <it's just> like, <laughs> with no beat like, well, yeah, well, la yeah, well, you know, last night you was there. That was a weird. That was a weird venue. That yep. it wasn't. It wasn't bad, but it was. It was weird. And you know, doing this game, you you know, you play a lot of different venues, and the venue decides how people are going to be. You know, I'm that kind. I'm not going to just go up there and go, hey, no matter what, I'm gonna just say this script and say these jokes. Uh, Cause that's, I don't feel like I went all the way out there to fucking, you know, I live in the city. So going out there and I like that little area that is, it, is quaint. It's a quaint <laughs> fucking neighborhood, but, the, but you did, that's never like, Ooh, I want to go do comedy for a bunch of quaint motherfuckers. Like nobody, but, but uh, if you came out to, to the show, I feel like it's our job as artists to, uh, yeah, man, to entertain or to engage however we want to do it. And then for me, it's my job to have a good time doing it because, you know, right. it's the funny business. So you want to have fun. And so to not, last night when we were chopping, I was like, yes, yeah, it's, it's, you know, this shit looked like a, like one of those church, you know, retreats or something. The, oh, yeah. the picnics and the white people and the woods and the way that it was. <laughs> and it was like, you know, yeah, this needs to be, let's, let's take this. Yeah, let's take our time with this and just, you know, rock, you know, rock on the freestyle tip. And, you know, yeah, I've been talking about, I just dropped the special and it was about uh, a lot of shit happening in the world. Very funny. Go check it out. I'm sure that, you know, I'm not even saying that for me. It's just, it's good, man. It's, it's top level shit. And, uh, but it's not very vulnerable. It's not a vulnerable, it ain't about me telling you about, me it's like this is i'm telling you just the way it is how i think maybe right. toxic my way of thinking but it makes sense all of it makes sense and it's not hurtful it's not uh but it's just like hey, hey man no one gives a fuck about you you're not special 
That's the gist <laughs> of it. Now, no, at least this is the next place I'm going. If you want to be vulnerable, since everybody wants to be vulnerable, everyone has anxiety. Oh, my anxiety. You know, everyone has <laughs> to the point where people's anxiety will give you anxiety. So now you're worrying me because the <laughs> motherfucker, you're worried about some shit that I don't care about. But now I, I got your anxiety. So we're living in a world where you could bully people with anxiety right. and, and then they got they could take a mental health day and as a toxic man, I need that. I need the mental health day. We so I'm representing the the guy who is just you, you know, trying to figure it out and not and 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 I'm pointing shit out and you know, but right now the vulnerability, so now I'm okay going, okay, you wanna get to fucking know me. Everyone could share their anxiety, let me share mine, you know. Uh -huh. Everybody's full of shit. <laughs> And you know, I mean, nobody's as as good as they try to. So I said, "Heartless, <laughs> he's a monster. <laughs> Ray's a troll. Ray's a do Ray's a doctor, a great storyteller, and a troll. This guy named Raymond Christian. He we did a tour together for uh, NPR. Uh, nigga storytelling is, is what uh, I like to call it. <laughs> storytelling for white people, and." Uh, you know, anyways, uh, I'm, I'm, ram I'm rambling, man. But good, yeah, good. It was good seeing you last night, man. So yeah, last night it was freestyle. You know, and it's you know, yeah, it that's no. There's no show. I'll never do that show that same way. I could take some stuff from it. You know, I watched some of it, and the dude just started filming me off the rip, the African. And I wanted to talk to you about that because I met like I met him at first, and you know, he asked if I was the comedian, and I said no. Not tonight, but just playing. And he's like, "Oh," he was, he's like, "What do you mean not tonight?" And I was like, "Oh, no, nah, man. I, I mean, I've thought of it, but it's you know." He's like, "You should do it." And I was like, "Yeah, but hold on, let me let me speak." I said, <laughs> "He doesn't I, even know you. He's just telling you, just giving you the assignment." But I was good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, it was it was it was. I think a lot of times people forget that you figured out what works for you, how you have to move when you see other people moving and doing it. Like, I, for me, it's like, you got to look at it from a perspective of not going into something to fail. And you need practice, and practice makes perfect, but you got to at least walk in with the basics. So, yeah, I want to, I'll go out and do it, but, bro, I'm, I'm going to just chill, and I'm going to go to the open mics, and I'm going to do what I got to do, and I'm going to learn, I'm going to take the feedback, this and I'm going to move. You you, you want to do you, you're talking about yourself yeah okay. yeah but i was saying he's like nah you should just go he was like you should go to king's Hill. and i was like yeah i know mike he, he owns it i know i know i know it's there but i got 90 other things that i'm doing right now bro and for me i, I have to be strategic when i decide to do this because it's like for me yeah you you might be great on the film side things might be working but i need to step into something where i at least have the same caliber and will get the same respect <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, you want the shine. I get it. The, I know what you want. Oh I, know what you, I, I know what you want. Damn, you love, four minutes I, for that bullshit. I, Hell no. <laughs> I, I know, yeah, yeah. Niggas love the shine. We do. Oh, Niggas we do. love the shine. I want to go in at least, <laughs> I want to go in at least where you like, nah, he did all right. He did all right. I don't want to go in and be like, nah, you was good, bro. But hey, uh, we need to chop it up about, um, but we'll do that after. We talk, we talk later. Like, you know what I mean? I, I want somebody to be, like, honest with me and be like, yo, that was dope, or yo, cool, cool. But there's a process, and what y'all do isn't easy. It's What y'all do isn't easy. And I'm sure, like, you know, over the years as you were, like, building to what you have now, and then you take away the two years that COVID fucked over everybody, and you're still grinding. And and it's dope because I see it. I see the growth. And I, I see it. You know what I mean? But I got to I say for yourself, what what would you say the, the 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 most important thing that you've learned over this grow, growing period, this growth well, period? Man, so you know, again, I don't know, uh, I don't know anything, man. But what I do know is, is uh, um, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't. If if you quit, then you then that that's that's the definitive. Then you could sit back and say, hey, I used to do this. I used to I used to sell cars. I was a car salesman in Fresno when I was 20. These dudes I'm working with are grown men, man. They're out of, some are out of jail, some are lit, some are old school, you know, uh, God dang, you know, uh, you know, what, what's, 
with them loan sharks and shit. This is like sharks. And, you know, you just, I sold cars, man. And of course, oh, people would come in to buy cars. And some of the guys who were buying cars would be like, oh, I used to sell cars. It's like, man, shut the fuck up. You know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't care what you used to do. You're not one of you're not one of us. <laughs> and so with with with, with uh, doing it and staying in this long and going through tough times, you kind of get to have like a little bit of honor or something or like pride in going, hey, man, I, I'm still making people laugh and I'm growing doing it. I'm not just here because I'm making, I know I'm funny. I don't need to do comedy ever again to know that I'm funny. You know, I was a funny right. car salesman. I was a funny guy who sold uh, phones. Was at AT and T. I was always could be funny, but now it's just like okay, I've learned my craft more. That's what I could say. Because uh, right. I and it's really from doing bad at shows. I was telling the guy that same guy that same I think that same uh, African that that was uh, recording me. Maybe the guy was asking you stuff. Get to that in a second too. But I'm saying I was telling him, you know, yeah, I've done. It's you. You really get good. You get better at least by putting yourself in these weird ass situations where you have to figure it out and find a form, find some kind of key to make everybody pay attention to you and then say something worth paying attention to and then making them laugh. That's our job. So however, they don't dictate how you get to make them laugh. That's what I lo love about the craft. They don't dictate, they, they like it. you know, you hungry, you go to a restaurant, you're gonna pay for food. You say spaghetti. He gets to cook whatever. You ever order some shit that sounds like great, and then it, it comes out. You're like, this isn't. It. And he's like, I, I didn't tell you what. It, you know what I mean? I get to make whatever I want. You took risks, you know. Yeah. But with comedy, that's what I. It makes it fun to take risks and to both, you know, to to be the one, the con doing of going. Hey, this is funny. You know, if you look at it like this. Or this, so right now, what I'm talking about with family and friends, and, and this is me being vulnerable and me going, you know, I don't go to therapy. I don't do all that. You know, yeah. I'm toxic. We don't tell secrets. I'm not going to pay somebody. I don't fucking know. I'm not going to pay a person. I don't know who, what they are into. They might be a weirdo. They might, <laughs> they might be putting the belt on their neck. And Jack and I, I don't I have no idea what gets them off. I'm not judging them. That's what's going to be great. But how can I say, hey, look, listen to all these problems. What, what do you think it is? Like, I do that myself. And I, as I do it, it's funny to me because it's just like pain is funny too. Hurt, hurt is funny. We're in a world where nobody, you know, wants to be heard. No one wants to, they want to just save space. It's like, that's nice. That's that's the ideal, but the you, you know the streets ain't a safe space. You, you know what I mean? Oh, your your phone froze. I don't know if it's mine or yours. No, mine, mine's good. Mine's oh, good. okay. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, I can. Hear you. Um, okay. Yeah. That's you, it. you you said earlier. You said I know I'm funny. Like, do you remember? the point where you actually, for the very first time you said that to yourself, were you like, were you a kid? Or when, when did you realize that you were funny? I don't, I don't even think I was funny until like tw 13, about 13. And that's when uh, the Simpsons hit in South Park and I had a buddy, Puerto Rican dude, Puerto Rican and Irish, Matt Mendez, rest in peace. He, he just recently passed away, was taken away. But he was my dog. Oh, and he was the funniest, and we would hoop. So we we could hoop. We would hoop all day. We played a one hundred every day after school, <laughs> one on one. Just play the one hundred, and then watch The Simpsons and laugh our fucking ass off. And then we started. He got a tape recorder, so we started recording skits, and we would do movie scenes that were funny to us. And we just you know we would play the characters in these scenes. Uh, like uh, nothing to lose. This movie, nothing to lose with, with um, Martin Lawrence and some other nigga for the dude from Shaw, Tim Robbins, and it was a funny ass scene. It was, and we would do it. Boom, or we do Terrence and fill up the character from <laughs> South Park <laughs> wrestling skits. We would do Macho Man and just riff and talk crazy, doing promos. And my older brother, he he 
we put it on the tape and I, I was probably listening to it and I left the tape in there and you know and then and I came in and he was playing it and I was like no you know that's mine you know that's my private <laughs> you weren't supposed to hear that he was like he was like this is funny man this is hilarious you know I was like oh, oh really you know and and so I think during that time that's when my sense of humor was like oh yeah this is life's hella funny you know teachers would get mad i'd be laughing every time a teacher got pissed it was the funniest shit to me i like when people mm. were on edge and, the minds. yeah 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 so i've always been toxic like i've always felt comfortable <laughs> when it was chaotic around <laughs> you, you, mentioned, you mentioned the macho man Did you have fame? were you a wwe fan wf fan like oh you loved yeah Mar i was I was a WCW fan, so they was oh, the low road. They oh, was, okay. they low yeah, yeah, yeah. I like bad, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. For WWE, I was like, nah, Bro, man, that's too the low road. <laughs> oh, man, ECW, all the grimy kind of wrestling. And, and, and when Hogan was a bad guy, he did the... Doing Hollywood Hogan. <laughs> calling people nigga. He was saying nigga all the time. That's, yeah, that's was the, talking oh, about it. Was like, dude. <laughs> He had the fat guy beard. He was calling, he was talking about nigga this and nigga that. I said, I like this old man. This guy the black lit. Guy. He was he the, the black guy. Yeah, that... He was a bad guy. He was a biker, hell above. Uh, and my dad. Uh, <laughs> my dad. <laughs> oh, shit. My dad was a bodybuilder, too. So a lot of people don't know that. He was Mr. Fresno. Uh, he was Mr. Fresno, 87. So. Wrestling was, you know, you see all these dudes who were hella swole, you know, doing a bunch of <laughs> you know, funny shit. Wrestlers were dope, man. Those were the first, you know, real big personalities, you know. So, yeah, you could, yeah, you definitely had an influence. I used to love Macho Man. Elizabeth <laughs> Hill. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you got him down. That was my yeah, he was dude. Talking crazy. He, yeah, he would go for, spit on his lips. Then he just go lose his mind. I was like, I love him. Yeah, yeah. Now nah, he was raw, man. He was very he's meticulous. I saw some documentary on him, and he would mm -hmm. write out everything and wrote out every planned every move. So you know, yeah. He I like Ric Flair more. I like Ric Flair's oh, more yeah. because yeah, he was talking loose, man, and you know, jet flying and profiling and kiss stealing and willing dilly. He was talking about sleeping with a bunch of bras, <laughs> yeah, having yeah, yeah. a bunch of good times and fly shit. You know, jiggy, uh, drip, all of that. You know, he was he was turned up, man, and and, and the girls would be going crazy in the crowd. <laughs> really <laughs> so, yeah. Horny housewives, man, it was insane. <laughs> He was he was doing too. You know he had some some me too's also, but like had some good time. He seemed like he was drinking a lot. That turns well, up they, a lot. They, sure. they all had. Yeah, they had. Yeah, yeah, that was wild, man. So yeah, yeah now nah, that's that's that. Um, you know, do you have a do you have a what, uh, like you look when you look at your top three comedians? Uh, what do you feel like is the that you've learned the most from them? Like and who would who would they who would they be and what do you feel that they've um you learned the most from them just then you add to you. Oh man, top three would be would be uh Richard Pryor, Patrice O'Neill, and uh -huh. Cat Williams. Okay. And I think I like all of those those because I, I can't I can't you can't be those guys. You know, right. they're so like they found their voice and they're so them that it's like, okay, there's no room to be that, so you have to be yourself, which is cool. So I could definitely, I mean, I'm influenced by others, but those are the main ones because they all just, just are master of a certain philosophy and a way of doing things, you know? Right. And, and all different, those are all different comics, right? Mm -hmm. Prior, you know, just, so, yeah, could paint it any picture and be hella vulnerable. Patrice, you know, is just just a psychologist, you know, break you down, a pimp kind of, you know, and just funny, just the smartest guy in the room, you know, and and very, 
very, very be likable, so likable, but that it's like, I'm going to try to, I got to make you get, I got to say something to make you get, feel something, and then you're listening. So he's, right. and then the cat is just, how can you follow that? Imagine following cat, you know, the guy it just can do, do, he's like a mix of Eddie Griffin and, and Martin, but just <laughs> he obviously in his own dude, his own guy, yeah. go political, go silly, you know, go hood, go go any kind of way, you know, so I could appreciate, yeah, I pick up a lot of things from those those comedians. Carlin, too. I mean, shit, man. Uh, oh. Rodney Dangerfield. I, I watched, uh, you know, Joan Rivers, uh, Wanda Sykes. I seen her live. It was one of the funniest shows I had, I had seen, you know, <laughs> so I get inspired by a lot of, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good, good comedy, man. That's 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 happening, you know. Is there one that you've met and they have given you advice and it's just stuck with you? No, no. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't. Cause I, you know, advice. I don't believe really in advice. You know, I know I heard Eddie Murphy be like, "Yeah, fuck everybody's advice." You know, because <laughs> <laughs> imagine being him and somebody, you know, saying, "Hey, man, you do, you don't know what you're doing." Yeah, some story, funny story about that with Rodney Dangerfield. You know, saying, "Hey, you're too blue. You 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 cuss too much." You know, and then he later on he saw him and he's the man. He goes, "Who knew?" You know, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that whole story. Yeah, so it's like I try not to give people advice too because I don't want to say something to steer them in a different way. You know, but if somebody's you know coming on the humble, you know, and really you know, I'm, I sh I'm yeah, why not? You know, but yeah, the only advice is really just figure it out, man, for, for yourself, and don't don't the advice is don't get gaslit. And I actually got to do a. I got to get out of here so I want to do this again because we only got to do half a, a segment. But um, I'm going to go do some family stuff, man. So I'm choosing to do, you know, the shit I want to do uh, <laughs> and not anything I don't, you know. But either way, anyway, don't let somebody gaslight you out of a life that, you you know, maybe your life, if your life is bad, you know, try to change it. I, I, I You know, I hope there's places and people that you could reach out to for that then pull that vulnerable card and you know ask for help or whatever don't be afraid to ask for help but also don't let somebody talk you and gaslight you out of thinking your life sucks and your position is like if i'm like oh man i don't got a lot of money you know i should not do comedy i should go become a millionaire doing something else if that's the thing it's like yo i like my life i'm i like the impact <laughs> and the contribution that i do i like my job. I love my job. I go up and say whatever the fuck I want. And, you know, sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, but that shouldn't dictate uh, your attitude to life. And if you happy, if you are happy, if you're doing something that gives you some happiness, don't let somebody uh, talk you out of that. That's what I'm, that's what my message is. That's a word from the Loro Lord on today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah y'all didn't expect that. Now what? You got, yeah. <laughs> got some goddamn homework. <laughs> <laughs> go work on you, brother. You know, so hey, man, let's chop it up. I'll, I'll hit you after the, you know. No let's doubt. Talk it out. I got to get, I got to shake ass, man. Peace. Okay. Have a good weekend, right. man. So yes, yeah, YouTube. Check out the special, man. Thank you. Or the web website, too, DinoArchie.com. You can download it there. It's at, it's almost at 15. 15,000 views, man, and that's that's a, my my friend said that's an arena, you know, so grateful for that, the comments are lit, but really go watch it, man, and if you know, yeah, I want to hear what you guys got to think, I'm, I'm, I'm open to uh, what the people have to say, but I'm proud of it, and anyways, I appreciate it, man. Hey, thank you for coming on, man, and I appreciate your patience. That's Dino Archie, everybody, comedian, podcast host, don't forget to to look for his gear. I know he's got some of it still. Oh, drip, yeah. Drip Lord. Yeah, man. Go to the web website, man. Yeah. Drip Go Lord, man. It's DinoArchie.com. Yeah. And, uh, Appreciate that, man. Or, I got like two two hoodies. Dude, I got all kinds dude, of Dude, you got the OG one, man. I got some good drip. I got some good drip I coming out. Some... That's, that's OG, me. man. That's okay. OG. Yes. Right. That's what 
And I was doing them custom <laughs> just for, you know, so I might get back into that, but I got some really nice stuff, you know, albums, everything is over there. So support, okay. you know, local artists and all of that. Yeah. So, all right, man, I'm out. Well, that's Dino Arch, everybody. Don't forget, support him. Go check out his special. It's called Toxic But Safe. That's Dino Archie. And you can find it on YouTube or you can find it on DinoArchie.com and you can find some of the Drip Lord gear. And uh, yeah, go support him, man. He's hilarious.